Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Plays Ace Attorney Investigations Episode 5. I'm like slightly under the weather, so might hear some more of that uh, during some stuff. But, uh, you know, I was messing around on the crime scene and I discovered that the thing I was missing was that I had to put two logic pieces together that make absolutely no sense. So we did that. We did proof uh, that the killer was in the elevator and combined that with spilled grape juice which there is none of in the elevator, by the way. So, yeah, and then we're, we're here now. So Edgeworth has it for some reason. I have it! Excuse me. I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. I can prove that someone other than myself was here around the time of the murder. What? Really? Yes, it's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the pudding, or rather the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here confess to me this very fact, that someone exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean a second person. But couldn't the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, but if you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which mean- which means... Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. He was not alone! There was actually one other person inside the elevator. All right, there they are. Now we're gotta be done. Complete! Oh yeah, give me that influence bar back. I need it. My authority is everything to me. Hmm, what's going on over there? That's... I don't know what you would even make syllables out of that with. Unforgivable! This is unforgivable! Do you understand what I am saying? The movie is late! It is the same level of bad as if the plane arrived late! Um, but the movie... What? I will not talk to you anymore! You are just wasting my time! What is the matter, Mr. LeBlanc? If there is no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do! I need not to sit down! Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you are innocent yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine, suit yourself! I am certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes? Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. Mr. LeBlanc's conclusions seem to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed time of the murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony. If you think you can destroy it, then come, let me see. Hurry, do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritated? I'm the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow and fast. Damn. I'm already feeling like... Um... When he was saying the needles are pointing at 6 and 12, that instead of 6 o'clock, he means like 12.30, maybe. Let's see. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12! Let's press that. I assume the pocket watch in this case is the one you keep checking, is that correct? Oh, you noticed! It is a very expensive antique, I will have you know. The feeling is wonderful when I fully wind it up by hand! Hmm, it does look very well designed and quite classy. I will have to charge you if you want to touch it. That's quite alright. Let's continue with your testimony. <laughs> what a cheap man you are! Now return the time you wasted back to me! And if we must, I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator at 6 o'clock! Alright, maybe not then. 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes. Let me look at, uh, do we have anything that proves the time? Sky Magazine um, shows that what happens at 12 is still just meals, all right. 
Six is when the movie starts. Drinks happen at like 10 and right before six. So yeah, it probably was six, I suppose. All right, uh, no, stop it, go back. All right, then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. I like how you can just make him rewind himself. All right. Let's just press everything. Mr. LeBlanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course! I saw what was inside! And you are sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? Yes! The only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man! Hmm, this last outburst is a bit too important to let go. The only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man. Impossible! And I'll present to you the fact that there are grape juice footprints! <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There is a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There, at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and? Will you admit you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is the set of grape juice footprints. Footprints? Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. They don't lead from within the elevator, though? That's purely outside the door? It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks exited the elevator alive. Oof! There must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? Scars of flash of flash of flash Can you please translate for us? Um... No way, that's totally impossible, I guess is what he said. No way, that is totally impossible! I know there was no other person in there, I saw it with my own eyes! If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right, he doesn't seem to be lying. But then what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc, please, just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? <sighs> Maybe the time will be wrong. I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was always checking the time over and over again. I happened to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me, and I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. But I swear there was no one else inside. No one! Mr. LeBlanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Ah, uh, no, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. Very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. Uh, way. So, are you still upset now? I am always upset! The only time I am not is when I have a piece of art in my hands! It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Hicks walked by me! I was always checking the time over and over again. Why were you so attentive to the time? Because... because something unforgivable was happening! Come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time. Return back to me my time, in money! You understand the point. Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Hmm. A summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. They were supposed to show License to Love, Laugh, Maim, and Murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I looked forward greatly to that movie. I checked my pocket watch whenever possible so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not wrong. It matched the schedule. But the movie was still late. Very, very late. Your pocket watch. 
I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's all right. The movie I wanted to see would not start, so I checked my pocket watch many times. Set to my destination's time. Oh, that's wrong! Because this thing says that it's uh, always... Wait. All times shown correspond to our departure time zone, baby. You retard. Ooh, I am so smart. Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. Now, if your watch has been set to our destination's time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth its six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe this Sky magazine, clocks on this flight run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, the movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Miss Tenero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right. It was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zhengfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at that time. So right now, we are still running on Borginian time. What? The time difference between Borginia and our destination is nine hours. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. Whoa! Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior at 3 a.m. <laughs> My one million cents! This should clear up all of the remaining accusations. So this basically widens the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m., it means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is where was Mr. Hicks during that span of time and what was he doing? Um, I've got something to say. And you are... Yeah, um... Oh! I'm Cammy Meal. I'm a flight attendant. And what is it you wish to say? Well, I think your story is a little different from how I remember it. Dude, she busty F. Look at that. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right. He pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point. Ah, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer in Zhengfa, correct? Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m., according to our clocks. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave, or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off or on in Zhengfa. What about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gotten on or off. Goddamn house phone. We're getting rid of it soon. But eventually, everyone, including Kami and myself, came back on the plane. So basically, I can assume that no one left or got on since our initial takeoff. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. Alright. Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you Mr. Ackby Hicks was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. Miss Meal's testimony, okay? All right, then that puts the time of the murder between 5 and 6.15 a.m. Okay, now, what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zhengfa. Ah! You! You were here the whole time from 5, yes? Then you are the only one who could be the killer! Mr. Edgeworth, were you really here in this lounge the entire time from 5 a.m. onwards? Unfortunately, yes. But then, how do we explain the footprints? Is not that obvious? This man waited for Mr. Hicks here in this lounge, waited to kill him, and then he put the corpse into the elevator. That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken, but what time I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter. 
because the entire incident concluded here in this lounge. Everything happened in this lounge. Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBlanc? What? Do you have another idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place in the scenario you presented. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than the lounge? Hmm... The iFly piggy bank would mean that it could have been at the shop. Right? The murder weapon. This little piggy bank is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and only there and is not displayed here in this lounge. Now, how then did it find its way here? Don't you find that a tiny bit suspicious? Hm, such a trivial point. It only means you prepared it, taking it from the shop first before coming here. It doesn't prove you are... It doesn't prove you are innocent at all. Ugh. Is there no way to win with this man? I if I may... What is it? Um, you see... Well, it's just as Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh, and why do you know this so well? Well, it's just that... That piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And when was this? It was... maybe around 5.40 a.m.? Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? Th that's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um... yes, I was. Come to think of it... Miss Tenero, when I found the body... I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. And what is beyond that door? That's the flight attendant's room. Then you were on the first floor? Yes. I had I had to do something at the shop and the in-flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first and then to the flight attendant's room. Are you saying you passed by me at some point? Yes, you seemed really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. Hmm, I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice of who it was. Anyway, the piggy bank was definitely there at the shop when I went there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Work, you say? Yes, the upkeep of the shop is also one of my responsibilities. Why did you not say anything about that until now is what I want to know. In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there, then? What is it now? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Rhoda? Don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I have already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're alright. Huh? That's weird. What is? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. Dude, what is with this chick's face? Cammy meal. What is the meaning of this, Miss Tenero? It means she's lying. Go on, admit that you are. You said you had permission to search all over, but you don't. And yet, here you are. You, flight attendant! What are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us? The captain's calling for you, Miss Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Miss Tenero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Mr. LeBlanc. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you would follow me, I will be your guide from now on. There's something about Miss Tenero that has piqued my curiosity, but right now investigating the in-flight shop is my top priority. Did she kill him? Miss Meal, about investigating the in-flight shop, 
You're of no use to me asleep. Wake up! Uh, huh? What's up? I, I need you to come with me so I can search the shop. Go on ahead without me. I'll catch up with you later. How has this woman not been fired yet? What are you doing? This dude's just pointing his finger at nothing. Oh, I am really mad! You had better hurry and bring to me some evidence! If you could wait just a little longer while we look into the shop... Huh! Don't number the birds before they are born! Don't number the... what? I have no idea what he's trying to say. Don't count your chickens before they hatch, perhaps? All I ask of you is your patience and cooperation. Oh, that made him stop pointing at things. Cool. Let's get on in there. Mr. Edgeworth, that's the attendance room! Ah, please excuse me. It was a simple mistake. You made a mistake, didn't you? Why don't you just come out and say it? That's exactly what I just said. I made a small mistake. Don't nod off while I'm talking! Damn. Oh yeah, the shop is this way. Oh wow, she uh, came with me very quickly. Go on without me, I'll be there literally two seconds after you, okay? So this is the in-flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? Guess I'll have to clean things up then. Teehee. Hold on, you can't clean up a potential crime scene. Oh, thank goodness, I hate cleaning so much. I mustn't rush things here. I must remain cool, calm, and collected. Because this piggy bank was left at the crime scene. There is a very good chance that the killer had paid this place a visit. Alright. Well, first let's uh, talk to you about stuff. I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. So, what do you think about what has happened regarding this case? Oh, I don't know. I guess I think you're the killer though, Mr. Edgeworth? I can assure you that I'm here in this shop to prove just the opposite. Yeah, but it was me that got you the permission to look around. Uh, you know. So, don't forget that, okay? How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Well, you know what would really show your thanks? You see that item for sale over there? Sorry, but you're going to have to make do with my words of appreciation. Inside this display case is a row of lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. But some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? Care to buy one? I sense that this shop is one shopper away from being sued. There are all kinds of luxury name brand merchandise for sale in this display case. And they're lined up in just such a manner as to scream, Buy me! to any passersby. Stuffed toys, just like the one Miss Meal is holding, are on display here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one, too. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuffed animal abuse when she says that? The glass from this display case's door is shattered all over the floor, and it looks like there's nothing on display inside, either. Hmm? Wait. Actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat? I swear I've seen one of these before. I have not seen one of those before. As far as I'm aware, anyway. The glass shell. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There is a wide selection of souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I'd suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs on this trip. Okay, then how about you buy something for me then, as a present? I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy you anything. But I've had my eye on that pendant for such a long time. Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something and then we'll talk. What are these? Oh, those are our company's completely original line of suitcases. 
They're practically flying out the door. That's how popular they are. You should buy one and see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work on this flight, but in the real world, you try, then buy. No way, but either way, it doesn't really matter. True. Either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase after they boarded the plane? Anyway, see that? Just look at all the Mr. iFly heads painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're painted on with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? Is it- it is certainly making something jump inside my stomach. Huh? Oh, I guess there's no fooling your refined tastes. You look like you really wanted to get one. And I thought I was going to finally make my first sale, but you saw right through it. Glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? But I never showed any interest in it to begin with. Tee hee! It really is pretty horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? This suitcase was designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss Tenero designed this? Yeah, it was a company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. Ha <laughs> sharp? Like stinky sharp cheddar, maybe. I really have no idea why the bigwigs decided to go with it. It's so blech. Miss Tenero designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! You okay? I I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Meal. Letting a suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. Here, I'll put it back. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna sit there. It's one sharp design. Sharp ass, bruh. Huh, what about these flowers? Beautiful flowers in a beautiful arrangement. I feel cleansed just by looking at them. Mr. Edgeworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh. Excuse me. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at my logic. Alright, broken glasses. Suitcase, shaking, tiny captain's hat. I don't see how any of these are connected. To be honest with you. But there's nothing else to, like, look at in here, so... I mean, we can present some stuff to you. We'll find, find out more. I don't know much about the shop. You still ask me about whatever. Um, I'm gonna ask you about Mr. Hicks's travel wallet, okay? So what is that? Are you gonna give it to me? Oh, but I'm not supposed to accept any presents. Unless they're really worth something. Okay. Uh, tell me about the piggy bank. Miss Rhoda said that this piggy bank was in this shop, right? Don't you find her a tiny bit suspicious? I don't think I can say either way yet. There's not enough evidence to convince me that she was lying about anything back there. Are you sure about that? You know about this photo? No, okay. Do you know about the cell phone? You don't. Alright, you probably don't know anything about Great Footprints. Uh, do you know about refueling in Zhengfa? Like I said earlier, I was the one answering people's calls while we were refueling in Zhengfa, and Mr. Hicks was in his seat at that time. What time was that again? He called at around 5 a.m. You were at your seat around then too, you know. I do recall people calling for service at around that time. Even if this turns out to be a waste of time, I must stand firm. I just know that there is a vital clue or two awaiting me here in this shop. Let me talk to you about your testimony. Oh, you don't know what your own testimony is? Alright, cool. You are a great A flight attendant. I guess we should do some logicking and just kind of... I just don't know what... Did the suitcase break his broken glass? Glasses? Glasses? Nit, they did not. Alright. Let's try that again. Let's do... Murder weapon and broken glasses. 
Damn it. Can't see a clear connection. Gosh darn it all. Tiny captain's hat and suitcase. Wow, this is uh, just embarrassing. This is just the worst. Murder weapon and suitcase. Go! No, impossible! Tiny captain's hat and murder weapon. Aha! Hmm. The hat probably used to be on the piggy bank's head. Let's give it a go and see. Yeah, I never would have thought that that would be anything. I believe this piggy bank was forcibly removed from this display case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Hmm. Updated in the organizer. Uh, really? Don't tell me you don't know what things go, what things go where in this shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So, come on, how should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. Alright, did we try broken glasses and suitcase? I'm pretty sure we did already. So let's continue to inspect this. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook aquatic! Alright. What are these? What are those? Is this the same man as the one portrayed by the statues around the elevator? Mm, yeah, that's a paperweight of the founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo iFly. On the bottom shelf, we have the cute one. The middle shelf is the realistic one. And on the top shelf, that's the floral version. Floral? Are, are you sure about that? Let me guess, you just said the first thing that came to your mind, right? It looks like I hit the bullseye. Alright. Look at these necklaces! The glass on this door is broken. Perhaps it was the killer who broke it in order to take the piggy bank? But it's a bit odd the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus, the glass broke rather cleanly. Ah! What is it? I... I touched the glass and it cut my finger! It hurts, Mr. Edgeworth, it hurts! Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. Hmm. Well, that probably means that the turbulence caused something heavy to smash out of the display case on its own. <laughs> iFly Airlines related books line this shelf. The history of iFly Airlines, the future of iFly Airlines, the seven wonders of iFly, flight on iFly Airlines. Working name, Go You Airlines. I heart fly ing. The titles make it very clear that they won't be making the top sellers list anytime soon. Do, 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 do. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Indeed! The contradiction... Well, it's not that there's a contradiction. It's that we don't know how things could have happened here. Well, I suppose we could present this... There is definitely something very unusual about this. About what? If the killer had broken the glass to get at the Mr. Ifly bank, there should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Ooh, I see. Yeah, I guess it'd be like that. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope, no there isn't. Which means that the glass was broken from the inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over from the turbulence and right through the glass. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hat was knocked off its head at the time, too. Huh? That's nice. Which leads me to believe 
that the killer took the Mr. Ifly from here after the turbulence. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Meal, and listen when I'm talking. What? But the murder occurred before the turbulence, which rules this piggy bank out as the murder weapon. So you mean the bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake? Yes, at this point that is a very real possibility. Um, but then what if when the killer went to take Mr. Ifly, they broke the glass by accident? The display case is locked, so that's highly unlikely. Yeah, but... There's one person who could've. Oh, and who would that be? Miss Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has the keys to everything. Miss Rhoda to Nero, huh? <laughs> Starting to seem pretty obvious that Cammy Meal is the killer here. She just keeps trying to throw suspicion on Rhoda because she don't like her at all. Or something. Alright. Turbulence plus suitcase. Yes, there is definitely something wrong here. What? What's with the sudden yelling? Oh, that was yelling. Tell me, Miss Meal, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? Oh, well, sure, they're totally ooze strange, like the color and the such. That's not what I'm talking about. Now pay attention! Ah, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth! S sorry <clears throat> These suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't they? But I guess they take after their creator, hee <laughs> hee. Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Meal. Don't you find it unusual that these cases are the only things undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, I'd sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. Upon closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. Teehee! I wonder how Miss Rhoda would have reacted if she'd heard what you just said. What's wrong? She makes a good point. It would be wise of me to watch what I say out loud. What's this? I've spotted something that's not quite right. What is so unusual about this suitcase? Uh, this one is locked in place, and this one is not. So do I... Take that. Yeah, I f yeah, I figured you thought the design was odd, too. I never said the design was odd. What do you... Uh, okay, fine, the other one is... You know what I mean. Don't even try and act like you don't. There's something very peculiar about these wheels. Huh? As in... As in, there are no stoppers in place on these. Without stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And? <sighs> and so, it is very likely that this suitcase was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Ooh, what if this suitcase is the murder weapon? Oh my god. This was apparently designed by Miss Tenero herself. The design has a certain je ne sais quoi about it. Yes, perhaps that is the best way to put it. Je ne sais quoi? Hmm. I don't see any blood here. Oh, but there's something. Oh, yes, there is! Look at that! What's this? The wheel is completely covered in something. This color and this scent. It appears the substance in question is grape juice. Oh, not blood? But why would there be juice on the wheel of a suitcase? Hmm. How interesting. Let us open the suitcase. Hmm, it would appear to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And it's soaked with blood. Ah! It's, it's blood! It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to our murder after all. Mm, give me my influence back. So explain this to me? What does this suitcase have to do with the murder? 
I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer used this suitcase in some manner. Such as to move something, perhaps. Uh, but aren't you just talking about the cloth, then? That alone is too small. A larger item would be needed to move what I'm thinking of. This thing I believe the killer used this suitcase to transport is... Uh... Uh... They couldn't have put him in the suitcase, come on. They couldn't have put him in the suitcase. Juice footprints, but there was no suitcase wheel prints. The missing cell phone, which is apparently gigantic for some reason. Miss Meal, wake up. Huh? Did you say something just now, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, I don't know, but I don't think that's it. Oh, this? No, no, I was just seeing if you were awake. My real explanation begins now. Is she really asleep? The thing I believe the killer used the suitcase to transport is... I mean, there's no, like, profile thing, so... The Piggy Bank! Nope, okay. Not the Piggy Bank. He transported the entire crime scene! All right, apparently that is what he did. Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? That suitcase is not big enough for that. Bloody cloth data jotted down in my organizer. But, but, in light of this, I'd say that Mr. Hicks was moved into the elevator from someplace else which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after moving the body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase in here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing. Just that... I was thinking about what Miss Rhoda said about coming here for something. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I assume that's you. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments, however, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation. The crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sounds like fun! We can camp out and watch over everything together! I've found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge. And I have enough evidence to prove my... <coughs> prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Meal reminded me about Miss Tenero, I can't allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. Oh, to be continued in its perfect timing, ain't it? It sure is. That's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.